Mr. B. Oh, this is interesting. So we were just talking about the Mr. Beast thing. We were just talking about that. And like, look at this. Mr. Beast, this is from Vice. It's trending on Twitter. Uh, Mr. Beast's, I don't know what this is. Get Stop this. Why, why is there a big bar? I don't know. Uh, Mr. B Squid Game ripoff is exactly the kind of video YouTube rewards. That's absolutely true. While the video is popular, it's reductive. It's a reductive ripoff of the original, not a triumph for the creator economy. YouTuber Mr. Beast take on the Netflix series Squid Game, where real people compete for four hundred fifty-six thousand dollars, is a hit with viewers, racking up a hundred million views since it premiered last week. Um. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Mr. Beast Squid Games video, 103 million views in four days. It took seven weeks to make. Netflix's Squid Game series, 111 million views in 30 days. It took 10 years to make. Well, that's not like completely fair because, like, I mean, one is a Netflix series and the other is like a 10 minute video. Like it's it's pretty short, right? Well, it's 25 minutes. That's really long for a video of his. Um, famously, Squid Game took over 10 years to actually be produced. Squid Game writer and director Huang Dong Hyuk told the Korea Times that although he wrote the series 12, 12 years ago, its themes have only become more relevant as time goes on. Uh, goes on. Da, 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 da. As a feat of production, it's not just admirable, but inviable in how perfectly Mr. Beast recreated the sets of the show. As a piece of media, it's perverse. This doesn't just badly misunderstand the anti-capitalist message of Squid Game. It's a literal recreation of the villain's ultimate desire to watch desperate people compete for money purely for his amusement. In Mr. Beast's version of Squid Game's uh, Marble Game, the YouTuber's research team even paired up with best, even paired up best friends in an effort to emulate the tragic stakes of the original show. When the top six are asked to do, or asked what they would do, I can't read, with the prize money, two of them said that they would give it to their families. More than just bizarre, Mr. Beast's Squid Game highlights a fundamental problem of YouTube. There's no shortage of people who make original art and put it online, but the internet is dominated instead by people who can take advantage of existing properties and fan bases. This is a particular problem on YouTube where the people film themselves literally reacting to things, oops, uh, <laughs> or laughing at other people's memes and making a lot of money off of it. This video is no different from those. It owes a debt to Huang show in every respect. Despite being original content from a popular content creator, it's nothing more than a sad retread of someone else's work. There's also an ad spot for a mobile game brawl stars in the middle of the video, meaning that Mr. Beast will also profit from the fruits of Huang's creative labor. So I, I do think they rise some good points there. Um, I'm not a fan of the, the constant like, uh, like, oh, that he's he, like, clearly he's profiting off of the work of Huang. Huang isn't, isn't like, um, making any extra money based on the success of Squid Game. He sold the show to them, they made it, and it ended up being popular. So Huang is not gaining anything from the success of the show. So that's important. So to see Mr. Beast come out and make good money um, off of it is a little... Like, it's a little crummy. Um, it is also unbelievably ironic that the show is all about putting desperate people in a position where they do anything they can to make money, um, to help their family or to do whatever they need to get ahead in life. While the extremely rich man who organized the whole thing watches on and laughs. That is funny. Cause it is like so tone deaf to the point of the show. <laughs> it's frankly amazing. Um, and it's funny that he's wearing like the actual outfit of the villain. That's, that's also pretty funny. Uh, that's, that's pretty classic. So I, I agree. Like it, Mr. Beast is in many ways, the king of YouTube right now, like without a doubt, he drives the most views 
um, he he's able to drive the trends. And you guys are right. Like Mr. Beast does a lot of good work for his community. A lot of money goes towards the community. Yeah, that's true. But to like, it doesn't change the the fact that if we look at it very specifically and pointedly, this whole thing is taking the idea of Squid Game, reworking it so that it's basically real life, but it's just not life and death stakes. Um, and then forcing these desperate people to compete for a crazy amount of money. While he he's also making a lot of money off of it too. Like nobody's going to say that he lost cash on this. If he was going to treat this as like a loss, then, you know, he would have just, I, I don't see why he would be inserting all of these, uh, extra ad reads. So just the, the sheer exposure from 42 million views in a day is, is worth it. Um, so yeah, that's insane. That's insane. It, it is. I, I will agree. It's tone deaf and it's beautifully ironic that he is, he's recreating a show where the show's whole point is to like that this is bad. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, so the show made this point that this type of thing is terrible. Okay, well, let's do that exact thing. <laughs> it, it's it's funny. It's really funny. I, I think it's, I don't see the point of being like, yeah, see, so he's profiting off of the fruits of Huang's creative labor. Like, yeah, but Huang also profited off of it yeah, his contract sucked, but that's just how contracts work. Sometimes you get screwed. Sometimes you make extra money based on the performance. It's the same thing. Like when, when I sign a, an ad deal, if I sign a, a flat rate where I'm like, okay, I'll make this amount of money for the ad read in this one video, I can sign that deal. Or I can also go and I can sign a deal where I get paid based on how many people sign up with my promo code. There are situations where I could make more money if I went with that latter option. There's other instances where I'll make more if I go with the first option. So it just depends. Like it's always a bit of a gamble. Um, and so for Huang to sign the deal where he's going to make more money in that l former option where he's going to uh, profit a flat rate up front and he doesn't have to worry about its success on the back end. That for him at the time was probably the the safest bet. He didn't know it was going to be super popular, so he signed a contract that reflected that lack of confidence in the outcome, which is totally fair. So it'll retroactively look back and be like, oh, well, his contract didn't reward him for the success of the show. It's like, okay, yeah, but he signed the contract. Like, he got the show produced. That's amazing. And now you better believe Netflix is going to talk to him and be like, hey, do you have any other ideas for shows? Because if we can put on the advertisement that it's from the creator of Squid Game, it'll probably do pretty well. You know? Um, so I don't know. This, this is like the standard kind of sociology major. Um crap that you see in a lot of modern journalism where it's just like somebody's profiting off of something that they did. How dare they? <laughs> and I, I don't buy into that. Um, I'm glad he got a sponsor that was willing to, to pay to make this thing happen. That's cool. It's resourceful of him and he's very good at doing that. But it doesn't change the fact that it is beautifully ironic that he puts on this crazy, crazy show completely missing the point of the Netflix series. Um, or perhaps, you know, well aware of the point of the Netflix series, which is why he dressed up like the, whatever his name is, the villain. Um, and yeah, it's, but at the end of the day, like, how do you fix this? How do you prevent? Like, I, I agree. There is a, a sort of weird, insepid sickness in YouTube right now where it's all about reacting and it's all about um, just kind of like dominoes falling. It's all about, well, this person said this crazy thing. And so we're going to react to that. And I'm going to put in my own thoughts. Like I was getting recommended videos of like Hassan, who I call Chank's nephew. Um, Cause the only reason Hassan like got started in media is because his uncle Cenk Uger, who runs the Young Turks, um, gave him a job on the Young Turks, not because he's talented, but because he was his nephew. 
And then Hassan built up his social media by doing the Young Turks media on, on Facebook. And then he bailed, started streaming, and just wrote all that. So it, it, he got started for very nepotistic reasons, but now he's very successful. So good for him. But Hassan, all these videos have started getting recommended to me of like him responding to YouTube videos that I've already watched. So it'll be like, oh, Matt Orchard um, made a video, a fantastic video. If you guys haven't seen this guy, let me show you. Just like totally unironic, all jokes aside, this guy, Matt Orchard, has some of the best content as far as true crime is concerned that you'll see. I, I think it's better produced than Jim Can't Swim. It's better produced than pretty much anybody out there. And this case, the coldest case uh, ever solved, is absolutely phenomenal. Highly recommend it. Um, but Oh, yeah, like right here. Boom. Why is this being recommended to me? Hassan reacts to, quote, the highly controversial case of Daniel Holzklopp, Matt Orchard. So it's a three-hour, 45-minute video of Hassan watching this video that's two hours and 17 minutes long. And you better believe because it's Hassan, the whole thing is just going to be like mindless jabs and thoughtless commentary. But like this, this is what's getting clicks right now. So I don't know how you fix it. Like we're, we're talking about this reactionary climate on YouTube. I don't know how you, how you fix it because at the end of the day, it's driven by viewers. Viewers are the ones clicking on it. So we can get outraged, but like viewers are watching it. So like, what are we supposed to do? I know people that w won't watch border patrol shows, but they will watch XQC react to border patrol shows. Well, exactly. And then you see the clips of him reacting and it's just him like sitting there. <laughs> wow. And that's it. Like, but like, if that's what people want to watch, who are we to tell them that they're wrong for watching that? Like watching somebody react to something else. It's bizarre. I grant you it's weird. People said that about streamers and, and YouTube Let's Players back when that was big in like 2013, 14, and 15. Um, mostly because we just didn't understand it. And even now, it's still bizarre. But at the very least, like Mr. Beast is like high production value and he's putting a lot of effort into this stuff. Whereas like Hassan's crap is just about as lazy as you could possibly get. Like, see, it's just his face, and then he watches a two-hour video. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh. Imagine having to explain to a chat full of 12-year-olds why victim blaming is wrong. The, why can't Hassan accept the fact that black women lie to... I don't know, it's just whatever. Um, it is a good video, though. But, like, this is all it is. It's just him sitting there as he watches somebody else's video that they've spent months working on. And then he just goes on and on and on about how sexist they are because they present an alternative view of the case. Um, it's just bizarre. It's bizarre. Well, if you can't what people used to watch on TV, it's not so strange that they watch... Uh, on stream or YouTube. Uh, well, at least like back in the day, back in the day, like five years ago, when people were watching uh, like border patrol shows, like we were saying on, on TV, like you're watching the show. But with this, like you're watching somebody else watch the show. And I think it's because it's all about, um, it's all about finding somebody that you can sympathize with and you can connect with. And then sort of in a bizarre way, it's like replacing the family dinner table, right? So it's it, like you're watching Hassan react to something and uh, you're watching the video with him. So it's like you have your friend next to you and you're going through all of this stuff together. And 
they put in their like input and their thoughts. And so it seems like it's more engaging than it actually is. And even if you find somebody like Hassan really funny, which boggles my mind, but even if you find him really funny and interesting, then like, okay, cool. But I, I don't see how that's like, it doesn't change the fact that it's very deriv derivative um, and sort of, uh, it, well, it's, I mean, that's it. It's derivative. Yeah. But I, I don't think you can fix it. Like even to a certain extent, like we're, we're launching this YouTube channel, the Luke Stevens clips channel, where we're going to be putting these highlights on. And like right now we're doing kind of the same exact thing. Like I'm reacting and responding to an article. You can say like, oh, well, I would say I'm looking at it and then trying to offer my input, but that's exactly what Hassan would say about this video. That's exactly what, um, like XQC would say about any number of things, uh, that he's reacted to and done. So at the end of the day, it's just, as long as people click on it, there's not much you can do unless YouTube and Twitch and like Congress were to pass some law that restricts what you can and can't cover and redefines fair use. Cause the definition of fair use right now is that you, it needs to be transformative and it needs to retain the value of the original work. So what I would say is like Hassan doing this and what a lot of like XQC does doesn't meet that latter requirement. It doesn't retain the value of the original work. Cause do you think these people are going to go watch this video? Well, no, because they're watching Hassan watch the video. And so they're like, there's no reason for them to check out the original video. If they like Hassan, they'll just go watch Hassan reacting to the video. Right? Like, so it doesn't retain that. It needs to be transformative to the extent that it retains it. At least Mr. Beast's thing, like this retains the value of the original work. People see this and they're like, wow, Squid Game looks crazy. I should go watch that show on Netflix. So it's totally fair use. Um, in my view, it's totally fair use in this case. It's a lot of work, transformative, retains the value. What Hassan does is not fair use. In my humble opinion, I don't think it would qualify as, as fair use. Um, so I, I, it, I, even like I said, we're, we're doing the same kind of thing. And part of it is just because this is what people want to see. Like as long as you guys are clicking on on videos or are willing to watch me and other creators react to things, we're going to keep doing it because why wouldn't we?